Hello everyone, my name is Zenitsu and I'm back with another Digimon deck profile video. So today I'm going to be taking a look at EX3 and EX3 offers us lots of new and powerful tools to build and iterate on some new and existing decks. And today's deck I'm going to be taking a look at is going to be the Link Dragons deck or the Hina Dragons deck. However you actually want to decide to name the deck, it's essentially a dragon based deck centered around Hina. So a lot of these Digimon do have on play abilities and Hina has the unique ability to try to turn those on play abilities into when digivolving abilities, adding extra usability on a lot of your Digimon so you could at least try to get their effects. And a lot of their effects are more disruptive and control orientated. So it's a pretty interesting style of deck to think about playing because of all of the different flexibility on your cards. But with all that said and done, let's just dive right into the deck, starting with the Digi Eggs. I'm going to be running up four copies of Gurimon, the BT8 version, as the main Digitama of the deck, just because it's adding some extra card draw into the deck. And if you want to run a fifth Digitama, it could really be anything you want it to be. But I didn't necessarily find the 5th Digitama to be super useful because we are going to be hard playing some of our cards, so we don't necessarily need all 5 Digi Eggs. Next, on to the rookies, I'm going to be running Agumon. So this is the BT1 version of Agumon, and this is in the deck solely to try to help it dig out our tamers, and the tamer it's trying to dig out more specifically is going to be our Hina, because that's just how the deck functions is off of how Hina wants to work. Next, I'm going to be running four copies of Vorvamon. So this is the brand new EX3 version of Vorvamon, and this is just one of the key cards to how the deck wants to work because it's playing off of Arhina on top of having a pretty decent inheritable ability while also being a card that the deck wants to search for. So uh, there's just a lot going on with this card, but when you play your Hinas while this card is just sitting on the field, then we get to delete one of the opponent's Digimon uh, that's uh, 3000 DP or less, which doesn't necessarily matter as much so this is the card you're going to be hiding in your raising while you're trying to build your stack more often than not because the ability isn't super useful and its inheritable ability also kind of does the same thing except that when you attack as long as it has an on play ability which a lot of the highest level digimon do then you also get to try to control the opponent's uh, low level digimon as well Next, I'm going to be running two copies of Solarmon. So Solarmon is at your flex spot uh, for the rookie slots, and it could really be any rookie you feel like you want it to be that'll best help and support the deck. I just find that still having some form of Floodgate is still pretty good for when those situations arise. You could use this card to try to help control and limit some of the opponent's actions, and uh, Solarmon more specifically helps limit and reduce the uh, opponent's ability to actually hard play their cards for a cheaper cost, so that way we don't get digicrossed or death -exed. And then the last rookie of the deck is going to be four copies of Jazamon. So Jazamon is uh, basically the counterpart to, to Vorvamon, and he's in the deck to help support Arhina as well. This one's a little bit more useful while it's just sitting passively on the field to be able to gain us a memory when Arhina is played, making Arhina a little bit more efficient to use. Then on top of that, uh, he has a nice inheritable ability that's giving some added DP boost as long as the uh, Digimon has an on play ability, but the fact that it's not just during our turn, the opponent's turn as well, they get this boost makes it just a better card to use in your stack overall. Next, on to the level 4s, I'm going to be running uh, 4 copies of uh, Lavorvamon. So Lavorvamon, this new version, is a pretty decent card at being able to help it dig out our cards. So we are going to be hard playing it if we don't have a Hina in play, and its low play cost of 4 makes it an okay card to want to hard play. So uh, what this card is doing is it's looking at the top four for any card that's Rock Dragon, Earth Dragon, Bird Dragon, Machine Dragon, or Sky Dragon in its traits, and one Hina, and then add it to our hand. So it's just your classic digger, except on a level four body. Then its uh, inheritable ability is basically what we just saw with our uh, Vorvamon, where it's just adding some extra control when our Digimon's attacking, to delete the opponent's low-level Digimon. Next up, uh, I'm going to be running uh, two copies of Flame Dramon. So this is the uh, EX3 uh, version of Flame Dramon, and this card is only in the deck to use for its inheritable ability. 
We don't care about its windage evolving ability at all because we're not trying to actually utilize that. We just care about the fact that it allows us to be able to DNA at the end of our turn. So that way we could try to use a level seven to act as a good game finisher while also still being a dragonkin to synergize with the deck in some capacity. And then the last level four of the deck is going to be uh, four copies of Jazzardmon. So Jazzardmon is going to be that uh, black counterpart to what we just saw with Lavorvamon where it's going to have that same on play ability to help it dig out our cards while also having that same inheritable ability as our Jazzamon with some added extra DP boost during all turns. Next on to the ultimates, I'm going to be running four copies of the brand new Lavogaradimon. So uh, this new version of Lavogaradimon is going to be the card to help not only control the opponent's Digimon, but be able to play our Hinas as well. So it's on play ability, uh, deletes anything that's 5,000 or less at DP, and then we get to play a Hina from our hand uh, for free, which is pretty good. 8 is a little bit expensive of a cost for a level 5 Digimon, but ideally you're going to be utilizing this uh, with a Hina already on the field, so that way it just uh, allows us to turn its uh, on play ability into a when digivolving ability, making it more effective and efficient for us to be using. Then its inheritable ability is actually pretty decent at being able to gain us memory back when our opponent's Digimon gets deleted, which the deck has a decent number of ways to be able to delete the opponent's Digimon to try to make our cards as effective and efficient as we can possibly make them. And then the last uh, ultimate of the deck is going to be uh, Jezzer Reachmon. So uh, Jezzer Reachmon is going to be that counterpart that we just saw with Lavo Garadimon, where its on play ability is going to be doing something disruptive. This time, uh, Jezzard Reachmon is going to D-Digivolve 1 on one of the opponent's Digimon, and then we also get to play Ahina from our hand for free. So whether we're hard playing this or turning its on play into a when Digivolving, this is the ideal card we want to use it for its effect, because D-Digivolve is a little bit more disruptive than just trying to delete the opponent's low-level Digimon. Then on top of that, its inheritable ability is just adding that extra punch factor, where if the Digimon has an on play ability, then it gains security attack plus one, which is already pretty good at trying to deal decent damage to help close out the game as quickly as we possibly can. Next, on to the Megas, I'm going to be running three copies of the brand new Volcanic Dramon. So the brand new Volcanic Dramon is doing kind of something similar to the old one, where he does have an on play ability to try to delete the opponent's uh, low level Digimon, and this one is just deleting all of their Digimon with the lowest DP, which is just pretty good, especially if they don't have a lot of Digimon, or their Digimon all have the same DP. Then he also has an upside if no Digimon was deleted, so you still gain value out of this effect. Where the opponent just can't play Digimon that has a 5,000 or less uh, DP until the end of their turn. So whether it's by card effect or actually trying to hard play from their hand, it shuts them out from that particular action, making him a pretty decent control tool to uh, lean into, especially when you turn this on playability into a win Digivolving thanks to Hina. Then on top of that, he has a nice uh, when attacking ability that again is kind of acting similar to the old... Uh, Volcanic Dramon to try to deal some good damage, where as long as we have a Tamer in play, namely Arhina, then we get to trash the top card of the opponent's security stack, acting as some good burn on top of any other damage boosts that he could possibly have, thanks to all the different Digivolution lines that are possible with this deck. Next, I'm going to be running two copies of Dorbikmon. So Dorbikmon is a fantastic card for how this deck wants to play, just because of all of the good synergy that he has with the deck already. So he natively has the rush ability, so that way uh, the turn that we hard play him, he could attack right away. And he has a nice uh, on play ability that actually does synergize with the deck. Hina doesn't trigger his on play ability if we decide to Digivolve up into him, but the fact that he has one means that he works with all of our cards that we already were running, just because they do require for their inheritable abilities a Digimon with an on play ability. So he's already fitting that bill, and uh, we get to delete the opponent's Digimon, and for the more that we Digicrossed with this card, the stronger that it's going to get, and we have lots of different ways to be able to Digicross with him, just because he's looking for Dragons, Soars, or Ceratopians, and anything uh, with those in their traits. So all of our Dragons do work with Dorbrickmon, making him just a very powerful Digimon for us to use, on top of the fact that his Digicross up minus 2 
is up to five Digimon with different names that also have dragons, swords, and ceratopians in their traits, and then that's going to basically make him go from a 13 play cost to a 3 play cost, making him a very powerful and synergistic card for the deck. And then the last level 6 of the deck is going to be three copies of Metallic Dramon. So Metallic Dramon is another really good card just because it is going to be supported by Arhina, trying to, again, turn its on-play ability into a when digivolving ability. And its ability is D-Digivolve 1 on all of the opponent's Digimon, which D-Digivolve is already pretty obnoxious just because it's one of the forms of removal where it's not actually removing the opponent's Digimon, but it's still being disruptive enough to set them back in terms of their game plan. Then, on top of that, we then get to delete one of the opponent's Digimon with a play cost of 5 or less, adding some extra control, but if no Digimon was deleted by this effect, so we still get some value out of it, then the opponent's unsuspended Digimon can't Digivolve until the end of the opponent's turn, which is again like a Volcanic Digimon, just being super disruptive, limiting and stopping some of the opponent's actions, and the fact that it's actually stopping... Uh, them from actually digivolving is just super powerful against certain strategies just because uh, it could stop hybrids from digivolving off of their tamers, it could stop the Digimon from going back into their high level Digimon, making it a really disruptive card for the opponent when it hits the field. Then on top of that, uh, to add to the disruption, during the opponent's turn, while we have a tamer, namely Arhina, in play, then he's also going to be a reboot blocker, so that way he could be aggressive and defensive all in one card. And then the last mega of the deck and only level 7 of the deck is going to be two copies of Ragnalord Bond. So Ragnalord Bond has absolutely nothing to do with dragons at all, but that's okay because he's just going to be acting as a good game finisher based on how this deck wants to play because, well, we're a red and black deck and he can DNA Digivolve off of two level 6 Digimon, one being red and one being black. So we want to line up our red and black level 6s on our field to use into a Ragnalord Bond finish. And what's allowing us to do so is his when digivolving ability of Blitz. So just for DNA, he's going to reset himself so he could already attack. And if the memory goes over onto the opponent, Blitz just makes it so that he could attack even when the memory passes onto the opponent's side. Which is why Flame Dramon is super important for the deck. So that way we could just either hard play or digivolve into another uh, level 6 with one level 6 already on the field to easily line up our Ragnar Lord Bond. Then on top of that, when we actually do DNA Digivolve into this card, then for every uh, four cards in this Digimon's Digivolution source, we get to delete one of the opponent's Digimon and delete the top card of their security stack. So ideally with a huge stack, this card is going to be burning the opponent for a lot of security while also deleting a lot of potential Digimon, which just makes the card really good at closing out the game. So if we could get some early game chip in, line up one Mega, uh, hard play another one or line up another one, then we could just go into Ragnarok Bond and finish off the game just because uh, we could burn all of their security and uh, attack with Blitz for the game. Then on top of that, uh, he has a nice all turns ability where uh, when a card is removed from the opponent's uh, player's security stack, then we get to unsuspend this card. So even if we just normally digivolve up into him, he's still going to be a pretty efficient card for us to use, but ideally we want to DNA to uh, line up a good game finisher just because of his uh, when digivolving ability being super powerful for the deck. And then as far as uh, tamers go, I'm going to be running two copies of uh, Tai Kamiya. So this is the BT1 version of Tai, and he's just in the deck to add some extra security attack to our part red Digimon, which is going to be our Dorpic Mon, which we could line up with his Digicross ability, making sure he has a whole bunch of sources, or just Digivolving all the way up into our uh, Volcanic Dramon. It's just going to help uh, us not only fix our memory, but deal extra damage. And then uh, the last tamer of the deck and the most important card in the entire deck is going to be four copies of Hina. So Hina is absolutely ballistically insane at memory generation just because as long as the opponent has a Digimon in play on their field, then at the start of our turn, we're going to be gaining a memory. This does stack per Hina, so the more Hinas you have on the field, the more memory you're just generically going to be gaining for the opponent literally having anything on their field Digimon-wise. Then her secondary ability, as I've been stating the whole time, basically turns uh, their on play abilities for our rock dragons, earth dragons, machine dragons, and sky dragons into wind digivolving abilities. 
giving our Digimon more flexibility on how we could use them, whether we're hard playing them for their actual on playability or turning that into a when digivolving thanks to Hina. And then as far as the options go, I'm going to be running two copies of Fireball. So Fireball is just our basic draw spell that we want to use to try to draw two cards. But at worst, we still can try to delete one of the opponent's low level Digimon with its security ability activating its main, making it just one of the better draw engines uh, in terms of options for the deck. And then the last option of the deck is going to be uh, our big hard removal tech, which is going to be two copies of Ultimate Flare. So the fact that we get a D Digivolve uh, 3 on uh, one of the opponent's Digimon is just really, really powerful already, just because we could shrink their stack. And then the fact that he just deletes all of the opponent's uh, Digimon with a play cost of 3 or less just makes it some good solid control for us to use. So as far as some basic play lines that you're wanting to go, it's for the most part your traditional evolution style of deck. You're just going to be evolving into your Digimon and you want to try to get your Hina out as quickly as you possibly can. So again, you could try to turn your on play abilities into when Digivolving abilities. I actually found myself not Digivolving that often into my level 4s and I found that uh, the two level 4s that the deck generally wants to play are usually better hard played. The deck as a result does want to go second so that way you could turn one try to set up your Hina or turn one ideally set up your level four so that way you could try to dig out your Hina. So uh, the level fives are a really weird spot where you want to already have your Hina out and you don't actually want to be uh, hard playing these cards even though their on play abilities to help play the Hina is still pretty useful. Most of the time they're just a little bit too expensive and it's not necessarily worth it unless you are just sitting on that much memory where you could afford to just hard drop a level five to be able to use its on play ability. These are cards that are better off of utilizing as a when digivolving abilities off of your Hina. And that's kind of the awkward thing of the deck is you need to have enough Hinas set up so that way you could evolve and not skip an ability. But sometimes you're forced to skip an ability so you kind of have to pick and choose which abilities you want and when you need to trigger them. As far as some good alternative lines of play go, uh, one of the reasons why I'm running a red base and more red Digimon is because of Flame Dramon. So Flame Dramon is one of those types of cards where we're just using him for a very specific purpose, and that purpose is his inheritable ability of his end of turn, allowing us to be able to DNA Digivolve. So if we're just sitting on our Megas on a field, we could hard play another Mega to be able to line up a DNA or just Digivolve into another stack to, again, just line up that ability to DNA Digivolve. And uh, because we have uh, the ability to just have uh, some really good stack potential, it allows us to have our level 7 be super powerful and super oppressive at closing out the game. So one of my favorite things I like to do is I try to just digivolve on the field and sit on Metallic Dramon, just because it is the defensive backbone of the deck having blocker and reboot, so that way we could aggress chip and have a blocker still on the field, on top of its uh, ability of on play slash when digivolve with Hina to uh, be able to disrupt the opponent, whether it's de-digivolve and delete the opponent's Digimon. Or just make it so that their unsuspended Digimon can't Digivolve. It's just the ideal card we want to sit on. And then we could either try hard playing the Volcanic Dramon. Or we could try hard playing the Dorbikmon. And this is why Dorbikmon is actually a pretty good of a card to use. Because Dorbikmon just allows us to be super aggressive. Because we could potentially play him for 3. But even if we don't play him for 3. The fact that we could just hard play him for a decently reduced cost. And he has the built in rush ability. So if our turn doesn't pass we could be aggressive with with him or we just use him as a cheap way to then be able to line up Ragnar Lordmon because we can use Dragonkin with the Dorbikmon's ability so that just gives us alternative means to be able to use uh, Flame Dramon to line up Ragnar Lordmon plays. So I think that's just a huge bonus over running the black base and the red eggs is just better than the black eggs in terms of general usability so that's kind of where I'm leaning in terms of why the red base is just better than the black base even though the black base does have some better floodgates. And then there's still just a whole bunch of other tech and tools that we could think about incorporating into the deck, all depending on what you actually feel like running. So when we eventually do get the security rookie promos, then uh, the Huckmon is pretty good for the deck to run, it's just because he is a mini dragon for our Dorbikmon, and his security ability is basically kind of doing something similar to Fireball, where it's either deleting an opponent's Digimon or allowing us to draw cards, which is already pretty good. 
Or if you just want to run something basic that is a rookie that also has dragon in its traits, again, for Dorbikmon, then we could just run something like Monodramon. Or if you just want uh, to use another rookie that has dragon in its traits that's a little bit more on brand with the deck, then we could just use the old uh, Vorvamon, just because, well, he's just still a very aggressive rookie for us to use. Then we do just have some other solid ways of drawing and searching cards with our rookies. So we could run a Sunarizumon from EX3 just because uh, when it's attacking, so we could change our egg to something that's increasing the DP to try to make this card have a higher success rate of living through the opponent's security. So we could recursively use its when attacking ability to reveal the top three cards and add a Dragon Star or Ceratopsian from among them into our hand. So it's just more digging potential for the deck to think about. Or we could just swap eggs to the uh, Gigimon eggs and just run it in combination with the promo Gilmon to use it so that way when we attack with this card we get to draw three cards. Then we do have some other really solid ways to draw cards in the deck. So if you don't want to go into the DNA route, then we do have Flare Rizumon as a really good level 4 Digimon for the deck to use. Just because when we're attacking with our higher stage Digimon, because a lot of our Digimon are going to have Dragon Star or Ceratopsian in their traits, then we get to draw one card. Or if we just want to use uh, some good generic support cards uh, for the deck, and again, to support uh, Dorbekmon as well, we could use Greymon for some extra security attack, or we could use Graumon for extra memory generation. Then on top of that, as far as an alternative Mega goes, we could run the old Volcanic Dramon, just because, again, he's still fitting on theme and on brand with the deck. He's just uh, not going to be as powerful or as efficient as the new one. And then as far as uh, level 7s go, you don't necessarily have to lean into the DNA with Ragdolordmon if you don't want to. We do have some really good solid uh, Digimon, both in red and black, that our level 7s can Digivolve off of. So I'm going to be highlighting the ones that are the easiest for this deck to use. So Death Xmon, whether you hard play him or Digivolve up into him has some really good disruptive abilities, he makes himself cheaper for the opponent having a wide field, and he has some good recursive removal attached to his secondary ability. Then we also do have Omnimon Alter S fitting on color with the deck, so it doesn't matter which mega we use, Omnimon Alter S is always going to be usable versus a lot of the other level 7s. His when digivolving ability acts as some good disruption, and his when attacking ability could also help but close out the game as well as add Digimon back into our hand to reuse for later. Then we do just have a slew of different options in both red and black to think about utilizing. And if uh, the BT1 tie is a little bit too expensive, then you could swap over to running the hero. The tie only works with our red Digimon versus the hero working with anything at level 5 or above, so you could kind of get a feel on which one you feel like is better. Or if you just wanted to run something a little bit offbeat and off-brand, you could run at Kyoshiro just to add some extra card draw into the deck while still being that memory-fixing tamer, while also giving you access to blue, so that way you could use it in combination with cards like Tidal Wave and Kaiser Nail to be able to split our Digimon apart and use their on-play abilities as well on play abilities versus trying to turn them into a digivolving abilities with Hina, again, allowing your cards to be able to do more and allowing us to have more different ways on being able to play our cards. So that's all I really have for this video. As always, feel free to tell me your thoughts down in the comments below, and down in the description below are a couple of different ways you could support me and the channel. So I do have a, a TCG Player affiliate link, so when you use that link to buy cards off of TCG Player, then some of that money will go to supporting me and the channel. I also do make and sell playmats over on Overcard Gamers on Facebook, so when you buy a playmat with my design, then some of that money will also go to help supporting me and the channel. And on top of all of that, I do have a Twitch account over on twitch.tv slash Zenitsu. So giving me a follow and a subscription also helps support me there. And I do play Digimon on top of various other games on that platform as well. So thank you everyone for watching. And as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content. And I'll see you in the next video.